Hey everybody, today I wanted to talk a little bit about something to do with Gunship 2000. Now Gunship 2000 is a wonderful game. I love this game. This is easily one of the best flight simulations uh, ever made for, for DOS. Uh, possibly one of the best flight simulations ever made for any platform, period. Um, but there's, uh, there's something peculiar about it that always kind of bugged me. Uh, well, I guess there are a couple things that bug me about it. One thing that annoys me about the game is just how difficult it is. Um, some of you might remember some time ago I played through one of the missions in F-19 Stealth Fighter and got the Congressional Medal of Honor. Yeah, I find F-19 generally to be fairly easy, even close to the, the hardest difficulty settings. Um, Gunship 2000 is pretty much the opposite of that. This game is murderously difficult even on the easiest settings, uh, or at least I find it so. Maybe I'm just bad at it, I don't know. But um, there's, uh, if, if you have trouble with the game, if you find the game is difficult, as, as I find it, then you can uh, use the mission editor to make missions that are easier because the game has a mission editor. But for this, you need the uh, so-called Islands and Ice add-on. The original stop game doesn't include a, um, a mission editor, but Microprose later released the Islands and Ice add-on, which adds, uh, it's called that because it adds two theaters, namely the Philippines and Antarctica. But besides that, it also adds a mission editor, so you can create your own missions for the game, which is pretty cool. Um, but one thing that annoys me about the mission, mission editor is you can't use it right away. Let me go ahead and um, run the game here, and I'll show you what I mean. GS2000, yeah. Oh yeah, MPS. I guess this is the, uh, obviously the intro. Okay, we can, we can probably skip over this. We don't really need to watch the whole intro, do we? No, let's let's skip over that. Okay, all right, here we go. So, uh, so this is the main menu or interface or whatever, or as you will. I always love the this this guy back here on the computer there. The way you know the way the lines of text are appearing on the screen, and of course I love the way that you can click on the screen to change what shows up there. So if you click on it once, it becomes Pong game. If you click on it again, it becomes the title screen to this game. Just keep scrolling Gunship 2000 back and forth. And if you click on it again, that looks very much, the color scheme to me looks exactly like the, the Norton Utilities. Remember, remember the Norton Utilities for DOS and how they mostly had this kind of color scheme with that blue background and this light blue menu bar up there? That really looks exactly like he's running the Norton Utilities on that computer. And then if you click on it again, it becomes, it goes back to being the lines of scrolling text. So, yeah. Okay, anyway, so that's that. Um, but that wasn't the, the main thing that I wanted to show in this video, although that is very cool. And I amused myself for several minutes with that computer uh, back in the day. But no, what I wanted to show you was, um, when you first create a pilot in this game, uh, they become a WOC, that's the initial rank, which I believe stands for uh, Warrant Officer Candidate, which is, you know, it's the lowest rank in the game. And um, if you try to choose the mission type, so down here you can choose what type of mission you want. And if you click on that and wait for this guy to hand you his folder there, you can see when you start the game you have only two mission types available. You have training missions and you have single missions. Uh, a, s a training mission is pretty much what it sounds like. Um, a single mission means that, uh, I mean, a single missions are real missions, uh, you know, quote, real missions, they're not training missions, but um, you can only have a single helicopter. Like a, a single mission has you just fly, flying um, one single helicopter alone. What's missing here from the screen are three types of missions, namely flight missions, campaign missions, and simulated missions. Uh, flight missions are basically also single missions, but you can have multiple helicopters in them. So flight missions let you have, you know, different uh, squads or battalions of helicopters flying in formations. Um, campaign missions are, you know, you can guess it's a campaign, it's a series of missions uh, that sort of forms a, a story, if you will. Uh, and then simulated missions. And simulated missions are what uh, what trigger the uh, the mission builder. That's Those are missions that you build yourself. But those three mission types, uh, flight missions, campaign missions, and simulated missions, are only available to commissioned officers who need to have a rank of at least second lieutenant. 
uh, and that's about, I think that's five ranks away from where you start. So you need, to get, you need to get promoted in this game five times before you can build your own missions. And to me, that's just absurd. That's just kind of, uh, kind of unreasonable. Uh, there is a reason for this restriction. The reason is that since the uh, simulated missions, which you, which you build, uh, since those missions can have multiple helicopters, because you can, uh, you, you can build squadrons that contain several helicopters uh, to fly with, um, it wouldn't make sense because, remember, you, you can't fly multi-helicopter missions when you start off, so it wouldn't make sense that you could build a mission but then not play it yourself. So they decided that only commissioned officers who can command whole groups of helicopters can design their own missions. So there, I guess there's a certain logic to that, but uh, it's not something that I was willing to accept, cer certainly not, because I want to be able to build missions right away if I want to build missions. So. There is a way to uh, there is a way around that. It's not official. I mean, like officially, you need to just get promoted five times before you can build your own missions. But if you're up for a bit of hex editing, it's not that difficult. You can let me go ahead and quit out of the game here, and um, let's go ahead and run Hexit. Hexit is a um, hex editor which. I'm kind of fond of. I mean, it's basically just let's see if we press F1 for info. Uh, yeah, Hexit. What is that? It's, uh, it's just, it's just a silly hex editor by Michael Klassen, um, which, you know, I mean, it's not, it's not, uh, yeah, he says he wants to make it the best hex editor around, but I mean, yeah, this is just the one that I've been using, uh, lately. Uh, you can reach him, you can reach Mr. Klassen there in Linköping in Sweden. I'm gonna guess that GeoCities email address doesn't work anymore. Probably that homepage doesn't exist anymore either. Maybe you can still look him up somewhere. He probably still has a, a website somewhere you can look him up and send him information about how much you like uh, Hexit. But anyway, um, yeah, so what we're looking for here is actually just one byte. Uh, there are six people on the pilot roster in this game. And so you need to find the correct byte for the correct person that you want to uh, change the rank of. So for example, if you see in the upper left there, see how I'm on byte number 54 now? That's 54 hexadecimal. 54 hexadecimal is the byte that stores the rank of the first person in the pilot roster. You can see I've named her Alice. Um, just, you know, I, I just went, I just did the Alice, Bob, Carol thing, just named them alphabetically. So, um, so yeah, byte 54 here. This is the, the rank of the first person, and it's zero right now, as you can see, which corresponds to the starting rank of warrant officer candidate. So you can bump this up to, um, I mean, the most up a pull thing pr to do probably is to increase it to five, because five corresponds to a rank of second lieutenant. You can also set it to, you know, one to four. So one is a warrant officer level one, and then two, three, and four correspond to chief warrant officers levels two, three, and four, respectively, obviously. Pretty straightforward. But the first rank that allows you to actually use the mission editor is second lieutenant, which again is byte value five. So let's go ahead and set that to five. And I'll just press escape to quit and ask me if I want to save changes. Yes, save all changes. And now if we run Gunship 2000 again, yeah, it, it's kind of weird. This, this game has a weird problem where it doesn't find the... Uh, it doesn't find the roster file if you edit it in Hexit. Um, I don't know why. I don't know if that's something weird that Hexit does with the file, how Hexit uh, opens and closes the file or something. I don't know. But anyway, uh, I'll need to restart DOSBox because I haven't found a different way. I have not found any other way to solve this problem. But before I do that, let me go ahead and actually go back and um, show you where we can find the other locations for the other people. So the first person's rank is at byte number 54. And the profiles for each person in this file are 122 hex uh, bytes long, 122 hexadecimal. So that means that the second person, uh, second person's rank is then 54 plus 122 hexadecimal. That adds up to 176 decimal. So that's this byte right here. So I'll just go ahead and turn all these to five. So 176 is the second person. Third person is at 298 hexadecimal. That is here, set that to five as well. In fact, let's be a little bit creative. Let's go ahead and actually not just set all these to five. Let's go ahead and actually put these in increasing order of rank. So 
I'll go ahead and say the second person at lo location 176 is not rank 5, but rank 6. And let's say the third person at 298 is not rank 5, but rank 7. Let's move on. So the fourth person's rank bite is at hex location 3BA. Let's go ahead and make this one uh, 8. The fifth person's rank bite is at 4DC, hexadecimal. I'm going to say this person has a rank of 9. And then the final one is the sixth and last person's rank byte is at 5FE, hexadecimal. Let's go ahead and say this person has 0A, because that's what comes after 09 in hexadecimal. So let's go ahead and save again. And yeah, I guess that's it for now. I will need to... Um, quit DOSBox for a second and restart it. Let me go ahead and do that now. DOSBox. There we go. There's DOSBox. And let me go ahead and turn the volume down to 10% because this game actually plays fairly loud uh, when I record it, uh, unless you turn the volume way down. So, okay, let's go ahead and run Gunship 2000 again. Skip over the... Uh, introduction as we did before. And now if we check it out here, you can see, yeah, see Alice is already a second lieutenant. So let's come back here. All right, so so these are again increasing order of rank. So Alice is a second lieutenant, Bob is a first lieutenant, Carol is a captain, David is a major, Eve is a lieutenant colonel, and Frank is a full colonel or full bird colonel as it's sometimes called because the insignia is a bird. So let's go ahead and stick with Alice, that's fine. And now, if you, if you click on the mission types here, wait a moment for the guy to hand us his file. There we go. Now you can see we have all the mission types available to us. So again, flight is still a single mission, but it's it's a single mission with multiple helicopters and a campaign. Obviously, it takes you on a longer campaign. But simulated, here's where the uh, the mission editor is accessible. So if you just click on simulated, not much happens. It just says simulated here. Um, before you do anything else, you should probably choose the theater here. So it defaults to the Persian Gulf. You can choose Central Europe, uh, the Philippines, or Antarctica. Um, I guess Persian Gulf is okay. And then, if you want to ac access the mission editor, what you do is you click on here. So if you go through this door, you can see at the bottom it says Mission Briefing. Normally this is where you go to your mission briefing, but we don't have a mission briefing. This takes us to the level editor or the mission editor. So um, you can't use any of these if there are no missions created. So you have to say create a mission and then you can choose kind of a template map. Um, I don't know, I'll go ahead and choose the one with some water in it because why not? Um, yeah, and this is the mission editor. So I'm not going to discuss too much about how to use the mission editor because that's, you know, that would be a, a subject for a whole video unto itself. This is not a, this is not a video on how to use the mission editor. It's just a, a, a video on how to access it, how to make it accessible so that you can start using it. Um, I would probably just play around with it for a while and see, uh, you know, it's, it's relatively intuitive. Um, if there's any interest, maybe in the future I'll make some kind of tutorial for this, but again, that's not what this video is about. So let's go ahead and um, quit out of this for now. And yeah, it complains I haven't placed these things, so it cannot save the mission yet. That's fine. Let's just go ahead and say abort, abort, and exhort, and quart the game. So that's fine. So if you if you want to do just manual hex editing, then that's, that's a fairly easy thing to do. You can just manually... Uh, edit that one byte to change the rank of, the, of your pilot, and then you can enable uh, editing missions if you want to. But uh, since that's a little too easy, uh, what happens if you want to make an assembly language program to automatically, um, you know, to automatically do that? Well, let's go ahead and do that now. So let's go ahead and run the editor, and I'll say um, GS2K fix, why not? Yeah, okay, it's called GS2, GS2K fix because we're going to fix the game so that it works properly and let's just use the simulated missions right off the bat without having to get promoted through five ranks. Um, okay, so let's see. What, um, what are we going to do here? I guess 
a reasonable first thing to do would be to open the file. So the function, let's see, this is where DOS comes in handy because DOS comes with a bunch of function calls to um, handle files. Otherwise, you'd have to do this manually, which is possible, but a lot more cumbersome. So this is where the DOS as a disk operating system comes in handy. So what we'll do, let's see, the uh, function for opening a file using a handle is interrupt 21H, uh, 3DH. Yeah, In t uh, interrupt 21 is the kind of Swiss Army knife function call for DOS. That's where most of the DOS, uh, most of the built-in DOS function calls exist and where you can call them from. So how do we do this? First, we need to set AH to be 3DH, because that tells interrupt 21 that we want to open a file using a handle. Uh, and then you need to set AL to, um, AL tells it whether you want to do read only, write only, or read and write. We'll go ahead and set it to one, because one is write only. Um, and then we need a, um, DS needs to point to the segment of an ASCII zero terminated file name. Uh, what that means is, so let's uh, let's do this. Let's go ahead and actually stick the file name at the at the bottom, uh, and I'll just say file name, and then it's a uh, byte data, and we'll call it. Uh, roster.dat because that's what the file is called and then very important at the end put a byte of zero so ascii z or ascii z means um, ascii with uh, you know an ascii file name with a zero termination that means you stick a zero byte on the end to indicate the end of the file name so this string here will now store the string roster.dat and then a byte value of zero letting the uh, function call know that that is the file name. So DS needs to point to the segment. So we'll say move DS um, segment of the file name. And then I think DX needs to point to, yeah. DX needs to point to the offset of the file name. So let's go ahead and do that. There we go. Nice and easy. Let's go ahead and delete that line. And um, I think that's it. And now we just call interrupt 21H and that's it. Now we have, um, after we do that, AX should now contain the file handle. And what the file handle just is, it's just a number that DOS assigns to the file to let, to, um, that you can use to access the file. So if the number is, let's say 10, then uh, now every time we tell DOS to do something with file number 10, it'll know, okay, you're talking about that file. That's all it really is. It's just an easy way to tell DOS, I want a number that I can use as a symbol to refer to that file. So please open that file and give me a number that, you can, that I can use as a kind of a token to refer to that file in the future. So cool. Now we just need to do two things to the file. First, we need to move the pointer. There's a pointer that points to the currently active byte in the file. And the uh, function to slide the file pointer is, again, interrupt 21H, because that's where most of the DOS file functions are. And then the, um, right, the function number is 42H. So um, we can say AH is 42 to indicate that we want uh, function number 42, but the problem here is, notice that AX contain, it's, AX still contains the file handle. If we start sticking something into AH now, uh, we're gonna overwrite that. So before we do anything else, what we should do is move the file handle into BX, move AX into BX, and then BX will contain the file handle. BX should now contain the file handle because uh, for this function, for interrupt 2142, we actually need to put the file handle in BX anyway, so that's a convenient place to put it. So uh, yeah, and then function 42 is to move the file pointer. Uh, we're supposed to put, let's see, are we supposed to put zero into AL? Does it matter? Actually, I don't know. 
let me check. Let me go ahead and save this. I'm looking at my source code, and I move 0 into AL, but I don't know what that does or if it does anything. Let me go ahead and see. I think I have help PC here. Yes, I do. Let's go ahead and quickly check um, the parameters for interrupt 21. What was it? Interrupt 21, 42. Here we go. Okay, AL is the origin of the move. So 0 means the beginning of the file plus the offset. 0 1 means the current location plus offset, and 2 means the end of the file plus. Okay, well, let's. Okay, so we'll start from the beginning of the file. That's, that's fine. So, okay, that's why I set it to 0. Okay, cool. Okay, so that answered my question. So that's why we set AL to 0. Okay, so let's go ahead and say, uh, go back to gs2k fix.asm. Oh, I need to specify the path to my edit file because this isn't real DOS. DOS box doesn't come with a with an edit command by default. Okay, so, right, so yeah, so we move 0 into AL, start from the beginning of the file, and we put 0 into CX. This is the um, high order word of the number of bytes to uh, move. Um, we're moving, how many bytes? Yeah, remember, we're moving, um, only 54 hexadecimal bytes, because 54 hexadecimal is the location of the first person's rank byte. So yeah, we don't need, uh, it's certainly not gonna exceed the size of one 16-bit uh, register. So we don't need a high order word. We do use the low order word, DX is the low order word, and we put in DX 54, egg, uh, 54 hexadecimal, because that's the location of the, uh, That is the location of the person's rank byte in the roster.dat file. Okay, cool. And that's it. Now we just call interrupt 21 again. And that will now move the pointer. And we still need bx to be the hand. Uh, so I'll, I'll put that here. We still need bx to be the file handle, but it still contains the handle. So we don't need to set it again. Nice. Let's just go ahead then and proceed as if everything was okay because everything is okay. So the function to write to a file using a handle is interrupt 21h function sub function number 40. So we move 40h into ah to indicate we want to write to file using handle. Um, cx contains the number of bytes to write which in this case is only one. We just want to write that one rank byte, the, the one byte that contains the player's rank, and that's it. And this time we need not a buffer for the file name, but um, oh, what happened? Um, that was weird. Why did that happen? I must have pressed the wrong thing. This editor really annoys me sometimes. It, it really does some strangely unpredictable things sometimes. Uh, I'll just call it byte buffer. Byte buffer can be, uh, I think just, let's see, five. That's it, because yeah, we're, we're writing five to the file. So, because you know, the value of five is what, what actually gets written to that byte. So let's go ahead then and say, um, yeah, so once again, we need to use ds and dx to point to that uh, buffer. Let's go ahead and copy these two lines and paste them down here. But instead of pointing to file name, now we're pointing to byte buffer. And again, that's what will actually get written to that byte of the file. And let's go ahead and call interrupt 21h, and that's it. Boom, done. We are done. We have overwritten that byte in the roster file, and the first person should now be a second lieutenant. Of course, if you want to use different ranks, you can go and make them different ranks here. So what's the highest rank? I think the highest rank in Gunship 2000 is a brigadier general, which has a byte value of B, 0BH. Let's go ahead and make them the highest possible rank. Speedy promotion. Okay, and we need to just not forget to terminate the program properly because otherwise the program will keep running and do crazy things with whatever other contents are in memory. So let's go ahead and say 
the usual move AX for C00 hexadecimal and then interrupt 21H. This will terminate the program. Okay, that's it. I'll go ahead and say save and exit. And let's see, can I run 8086 from here? I should be able to. GS2K fix.asm, it should generate. Yeah, I should have GS2K fix.com now in this, uh, in this directory. So let's go ahead and test it out. Uh, can I run GS2000 again? Yes, I can. And, um, right, so let's go ahead and test this. Actually, I guess I don't need to, I was going to delete this person, but actually I don't need to because this person is a second lieutenant. So actually, let's do this. Let's go ahead, if I run this program now, it should make them a brigadier general. So let's try it. GS2K fix. That's it. They should now be a brigadier general if all went well. Yes, they are. BG. BG Alice, and that gray star up there means that Alice is now a Brigadier General. Um, other than opening up the different mission types to you, getting promoted doesn't really do much else. So getting promoted to the top rank doesn't mean that you get super cool missions. Actually, I think it means the opposite. I think I th Usually, if you're promoted to a Brigadier General in these Mega Pros games, that means that you're retired. That means that you actually can't play any more missions because that character is retired after being a general, or at least they're not flying active missions anymore. Uh, because being a general is normal. If you're a general, you're not like a soldier or a, you know a, a pilot or a sailor who actually goes into battle. Usually, you you take on more of like a planning role. You become a politician or some, you know something like that. Um, actually, in the new Top Gun movie that's coming out. Um, they're, they're making a new Top Gun movie, in case you haven't heard, and I'm actually looking forward to it because the original Top Gun is actually one of my personal favorite movies, um, and it was supposed to be released this year, but I think the release date got pushed back a bit because of, you know, the coronavirus situation, so I think now it's scheduled to be released later this year or early next year, but um, part of the premise of that movie is it's still about Tom Cruise's character, Maverick. And Maverick is still a pilot, and he should have been promoted by now to some super high rank, but he deliberately avoids getting promoted because he wants to keep flying. He knows that if he keeps getting promoted, eventually he'll be promoted to some rank where he can't fly anymore. He just sits behind a desk and does, you know, uh, administrative stuff and, you know, plans wars or whatever, but doesn't actually fight in them. And he wants to keep flying, so he actually deliberately messes up to, you know, to, or he deliberately does things to avoid getting promoted. I don't know much about the film because obviously it hasn't been released yet and it's still, you know, still being made, but as I understand it, that's part of the premise of the film. But anyway, sorry, a bit of a tangent there, but yeah, that's, uh, so yeah, Brigadier General in this game means that you're retired, you can't fly missions anymore. Uh, so I think, I guess that's it, yeah. And obviously if you want to set these other people to be, um, to be different ranks, you just change where uh, you change how many bytes you slide forward in the file, and that should change where the uh, the do value actually gets written to the file. So I guess that's it. That's all I wanted to show you. Uh, and yeah, like I said, um, how to actually use the simulator, that's kind of a, a whole science unto itself. That's something for a different video. But for now, I just wanted to show you how to access the simulator if you don't want to play this game a whole bunch and get promoted a bunch without being able to make your own missions. Of course, there is an easier way to do it in that somebody already made a program called GS2K Ed, Gunship 2000 Editor. And if you run this, if you search online, do a, a Google search for this program, you can find it relatively easily online. Uh, apparently, it's, it was programmed by someone named Gary Hamblin. So my thanks to the programmer of, of GS2K Ed, apparently Gary Hamblin. Uh, so here you can see all the six people in the game. You can choose one, like let's say, I'll choose Alice again. And you can choose their name, you can change their name, you can change their rank. So here are all the different ranks. So there's Warrant Officer Candidate, Warrant Officer 1, 2, 3, and 4, Second Lieutenant, First Lieutenant, Captain, Major, Lieutenant Colonel, Full Bird Colonel, and the Brigadier General. So yeah, you can change their ranks here as you please. Uh, you can change their status to Active, Retired, Missing in Action, or Killed in Action. Change how many missions they've flown, I think up to 99. Yeah, 99 is the, is the maximum. You can change how many, uh, can I, is it not like that or? Oh, okay. 
Uh, and can't, you can change how many campaigns they've flown in. And that stuff that you see there, the CMOH and the DSC, those are names of decorations. The CMOH is the Congressional Medal of Honor. DSC is the Distinguished uh, Service Cross, I think. Stuff like that. Uh, you know, Silver Star, Purple Heart. Uh, so you can change how many decorations they have. You also have the op option here to modify the wingman. I'll say no, we don't need to. Actually, wh what happens if you modify the wingman? Let's say yes. Yeah, here you can actually modify all the different wingmen that you can fly with. I guess there are four of them. I never really bothered with this because I prefer flying alone, but... Okay, can I just uh, exit out of this? No, I guess not. I, okay, I just keep pressing enter. There we go. Okay, nice. Um, and you can just exit like that. Do you wish to save changes? Sure. And then if we go back, we should find that uh, Alice is now a captain. Yeah. So, yeah, once again, thanks to the programmer of GS2K Ed. Great program. Very simple program, but uh, it does something very useful. Uh, I guess that's it. That's all I had to say about the matter. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hope this was interesting. And if any of you um, are interested in making your own missions for Gunship 2000, have at it. Go and make some awesome missions because it's a great game. And um, the mission editor is a bit... Uh, yeah, well, it, it could be better. I mean, it, it could be a little more intuitive, but it's it's not terrible. I mean, it, it works. So, yeah, um, give it a try. Have some fun. And uh, thanks for watching again, and I will talk to you folks later. Bye-bye for now.